everyone, Candy Zara here, Candy Zara Roof here. I am here, back, feeling much better than I was earlier this month. So I wanted to go ahead and update you guys. I posted this book on my Instagram. I am reading, or I have read this book. I've looked it over a few times. It's a really good book. Um, I don't necessarily agree with every um, theological outcome that she had with this, uh, with her particular writing, but it wasn't supposed to be a book on the theology of homosexuality. It was a woman telling her story about how she used to identify um, as a lesbian and now she doesn't and that that's not um, where the focus needs to be. So I think that this book is really important to not review but to discuss or just I guess give my thoughts on the book because many of you who have read my book know um, that I used to live a bisexual lifestyle and let me preface all of this um, with saying if you are someone who is LGBTQAI plus watching this um, believer or not hear me I just like the author of this book Jackie Perry we do not support agree with believe in uh, condone any of those things, um, gay conversion therapy or anything abusive like that. Um, I think the church and religious communities have just done an atrocious job of loving thy neighbor when that neighbor identifies as LGBTQAI+, plus, as well as is anything other than white American. But we won't go off on that tangent. Um, but I did want to say that. I did want to put that out there that this is not me saying um, that this book will turn you straight and change your life and whatever. This book actually goes against that type of false gospel and that type of um, heresy, if you will. Um, one of the things I really like about her writing this book is that she was very clear that she believes that yes it's sin um, yes the desire and the temptation is is not is it's unholy it's not um, righteous if you will um, but it is no different than other unrighteous and unholy sexual sin and temptation um, so she, she does a really good job of making that point and making it clear that for too long, especially in the Reformed Church, there's been this gospel of straightness, which again is an idol and it's, it's a false gospel and it's, it's telling people, well, if you just believe, if you just trust God enough, you just have enough faith, then he'll make you straight and then poof, all of your issues will disappear and you'll be good enough essentially to have merited eternal life and for me that was the biggest takeaway and the biggest reason why I think many 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 Christians especially if you are more of like on a reform side or a conservative side should read this book because I think she she and I have very similar like they call it middle ground, but you have one side that celebrates it and, and says, get married in the church, it's fine, God loves you as you are, and they're not going to say that it's sin. They're, they're going to say, well, you know, go to the Greek, or I don't know, here's all the reasons why it's not a sin anymore, or, you know, whatever. And then you have the other side that's like, if that's your life, that's your lifestyle, that's your desire, that's your temptation, then boom, you're going to hell. As if your sexuality saves you. And I have to just put this out here to anyone who is preaching that type of gospel to where when you really pick it apart, you're telling people that it's your sexuality that will either decide if you're going to heaven or hell. You are preaching a false gospel. That's not the truth. Scripture says it is by faith through grace. And that, that faith is a gift from God to you. It doesn't say anything about, well, it's your sexuality or it's, you know, just be humble or don't be angry or, you know, don't don't watch, you know, the, 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 the stuff online or don't lust and, and like, then you'll get heaven. Um, scripture is clear that the only thing 
that's going to save you is the blood of Yeshua Jesus on that cross, his death, burial, and resurrection and acceptance of his offering before the Father and him sitting down at the right hand of God. Your belief and your profession in that is what's going to save you. And then Paul teaches us in the New Testament to now work out your salvation. That does not mean now go work to keep your salvation. That's not what he's saying. He's saying like when you work out and you lift weights, work out your salvation to continue to walk and literally work work it out. Like it's highs, it's lows, there's struggles, there's challenges, there's a pushing and a pulling when it comes to your faith. And Paul is saying, do the pushing, do the pulling, do the heavy lifting, do the resting, do all that you know you need to do like you would in a workout, physical workout, work out your salvation. And I'll say it, I believe that there are believers who I believe are going to be in the kingdom, who have same-sex attraction, who maybe fall a lot or, you know, maybe don't. Um, some who are about to celibacy, and I don't know. Like, there is a possibility that, yes, there will be people who are in um, same-sex marriages who will be in the kingdom because that's not what saves you. That's, that's not what saves you. Your sexuality and your marriage and your lifestyle with who you're married to and all of that, it doesn't save you. Because if that's the case, then for every man who's married to a woman in a heterosexual marriage who has a lusting issue, who lusts after women, and who has the attitude of like, I just really feel like, you know, my pastor taught me this, but I just feel like it's just the way God kind of wired men. And then they quote the whole modesty study of, didn't you guys know that if a woman is wearing a bikini, my brain lights up to use her as a tool. It's not my fault. It's their fault. So for every man in the church, pastors included, you know, uh, clergy included, whoever, who thinks that way, then you have to toss them into hell too if you're going to compare the, the two things because they're both pridefully living out that which is called sin in the scripture. And Jesus, Yeshua, goes so far as to say that if you look upon a woman with lust, it's adultery, period. And adultery is sexual sin. It is on the same level of sexual sin as living a homosexual lifestyle. So to have this view that like if you're living a homosexual marriage or a lifestyle or whatever, then automatically they're all going to hell. I believe that that is just unscriptural. I don't know where people feel like they can like draw that conclusion unless of course they feel like they can toss every man in the world who's married, <laughs> Christian or not, um, who, who lusts after a woman into hell too. Like, I just, you know, I personally, that, that's where I come from. But I wanted to read um, a quote from her book, or like a little excerpt from her book, because I, it's, it's good, guys. And I think it's a conversation that the church needs to get comfortable having and that people need to develop a bit more empathy and biblical understanding of the weightier matters of the law and truly the fundamentals of the gospel before you enter into these discussions on the topic of sexuality. Um, okay, so she writes, uh, again, as I said before, I don't believe it is wise or truthful to the power of the gospel to identify oneself by the sins of one's past or the temptations of one's present, but rather to only be defined by the Christ who's overcome both for those he calls his own. All men and women, including myself, that are well acquainted with sexual temptation are ultimately not what our temptation says of us. We are what Christ has done for us, therefore our ultimate identity is very simple. We are Christians. And like, to me, I was like, girl, yes, yes. Like, in our culture, our culture has reacted, I think, to, um, like, the old church, the, the Church of England, like, the old church, um, and has reacted to that, and even, like, the, the Church of the South, has reacted to um, the murders and the abuse of, you know, when people who were raised Christian became, came out, and then they were abused by parents and family members, and some even killed, some even killed. I think then our culture 
went to the other side of saying, okay, we're going to be loud and proud, i.e. pride, and we're not going to let this destroy us. We're not going to have any more people who commit suicide because of this and because of the lack of acceptance. And so we're going to identify ourselves purely by our sexuality. And I think it's harmful, like outside of like, you know, faith in scripture. I think it's harmful to do that, whether you're a believer or not, because it, it devalues you as an animal as, as, as an animal like it's just it's very animalistic to identify yourself strictly by your sexuality and like I believe we are humans we bear the image of God and I think it's even more devaluing to you know because people have like thing of like the gay Christian and I think it's even more devaluing to identify yourself by sins or by your successes and accomplishments like it's it's not it's not helpful either way you go you're identifying yourself by something outside of the blood of the messiah outside of your true identity as a follower of christ as a co-heir of christ as a conqueror through christ you know like that's a child of god a daughter of god a daughter of the king those are the only things you need to really identify yourself by and i think um too often we identify ourselves as like everything else except for that but i just really appreciated this book because she really tears down this gospel of heterosexuality um and she makes the point that like just begging god to like fix one sin or one issue or one thing you end up elevating that thing that sin that issue whatever you're asking god to like just fix this one thing and then like then then i'll be good enough for you you elevate that to the place of God. You don't want God. You just what you just want what you think will make you good enough to then earn his respect of you as a person. And scripture teaches like he's no respecter of persons. And so not to get too long or drawn out, but this is a really um, it's a really good read. It's an easy read. It's a relatively short read. Um, it's like a hundred and hundred like yeah, a hundred and like ninety three pages. So it's not it's not like a long read and it's really written in a way where you kind of feel like it's conversational and you're just like listening to someone's story. So again, I definitely think you guys should get this book. Her story is very different than mine. I won't tell you how her story ends, but I will say that with me and my story, if you read my book, I was living um, that lifestyle and the night that I came into relationship with the Most High, um, I ended up breaking up with my girlfriend because I just felt like that was something she was someone that I was elevating on the like the same level as God. It wasn't necessarily about like the whole like cure my sexuality thing, but it was about um, just that relationship. I was making it an idol, making her an idol, and I had to let that go. And then after that relationship, I just like didn't feel overwhelmingly attracted to the same sex and then as time went on like it just kind of you know I just didn't find myself being attracted to women in the way that I was and so I don't at all tell like teach the whole like God healed me of you know uh, that disease kind of thing like I, I don't I don't believe that I don't think that way but I do think he took a desire that was not of him and that was not um, something he wanted for me to have a way. And he did it, you know, without me like begging and crying on my knees. And I'm so empathetic to um, believers who truly love God, who just, who love God, who love Jesus, who struggle and they believe for themselves that it's sin and they struggle and they sweat and they cry at night because they just, they don't want to have that struggle. And it's like, I want to encourage you that even if you have to have that struggle all the days of your life, like you're not alone. And like, there's so many others struggling that way. There, yes, same sex attraction and homosexuality is very stigmatized in the church. So my heart goes out to you. Um, and just stay strong in, in Christ and know that the same gospel that saves you is the same gospel that keeps you. Um, and that there's no, there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear. So until next time, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. 
Um, I am going to try my best to like delete any of the hateful comments um, on this video because I know that there will be some. Um, if I can't keep up with it and just kind of cause, causes me anxiety, then I'll probably turn off the comments. So anyway, I'm just letting you guys know that beforehand. So maybe that might deter somebody from wasting their time. <laughs> but until next time, God allowing. Bye, everyone.